Hi, I'm Alan Murdoch. For the past 20 years, I've been buying, fixing, and selling properties right here in Southern Arizona. And I want to buy your property. Whether it's a house, apartment, commercial building, or vacant land, regardless of the condition or the situation, I want to talk to you. When you sell to me, I pay cash and it's hassle-free. No repairs, no closing costs, and no commissions. If you have a property you don't want to deal with and you want a quick solution, call, text, or visit SellTalon.com. Again, that's SellTalon.com. Copper Creek Cookies, Copper Creek Cookies, Copper Creek Cookies.net. We can print anything on our soft vanilla logo cookies. We deliver them and other sweet treats locally. We are located at 4249 West Ina Road, Suite 121. Call us, 520-300-1131. We bake smiles. Copper Creek Cookies, Copper Creek Cookies, Copper Creek Cookies.net. Hello and welcome back to another episode of Local Marana. Meet the Mayor, Ed Honey. <laughs> welcome back. Oh, it's nice to be back, Clint. You know, Took we the haven't done off, this in right? a while. You know, and uh, you had a birthday. I just had a birthday. Thirty-nine. I celebrated the sixtieth anniversary <laughs> of my sixteenth birthday. Yeah. You had a good summer. Oh, I had a you great went and summer. Saw your kids. Went visited the yeah. kids. Been to Texas a couple of times. You know, yeah. Colorado, uh, uh, California, California, Texas. I was in Nevada, and then my now both of my adult kids live in California. And I tell everybody I'm going to a communist country, <laughs> and I may not make it out, but I I want to see my children. And grandchildren. Go go leave so, some money there. And then next week, I know you've got some things you want to talk about. Next, but next week, week, you're doing some pretty uh, cool going stuff. Going to Arizona Lega Cities, and I fortunate enough to be on the executive board there for with 25 mayors out of the 91 in Marana, and uh, we have a three day celebration at Star Pass. And uh, we talk about what's going on in the state or in the federal or in the local. And uh, it's just a great event. Uh, I've been doing this for 36 years. And I learn something every time I go. A birdie told me that you're going to get an award for those years. 36 years. You served your community and, for 36 uh, years. I think I'm the longest serving elected official in Pima County. Yeah, and played in several roles. Right. I mean, you, you're the mayor now, but you haven't always been the mayor. I, I, was, I was a council member uh, on the, I've been about half and, uh, you know, half and maybe half. 18, 20 years as mayor and the other half as a, a council member in Miranda. Yes. Of the second fastest growing city, certainly in Arizona, but I would argue the Southwest as about a whole. 61,000 people. And still growing fairly rapidly. There's a different type of growth now. Most of our new housing coming into Miranda right now is single family rental housing. And big major corporations are coming in from LA or mm -hmm. New York or whatever with billions of dollars. And they buy a strip of land and build like 400 houses, just like a single family mm -hmm. neighborhood. Mm -hmm. But it's strictly rental. Yeah, we need some in between. And the one we're dealing with right now has three projects in Miranda totaling about a thousand homes. That's awesome. Now, I know what you got on your mind. The alphabet <laughs> soup program. I I was telling you when I you were asking what I wanted to talk about today, I said I want to talk about MPOs, COGS, PAGs, CACs. And all and all of that type of stuff. So I thought an MPO is a Metropolitan Planning Organization. The federal government requires any city or town or any entity, a small county or whatever, once they're over 50,000, they have to set up an MPO. And basically what that is, it could be a county or it could be a city or a town. You start talking about roads and drainage and airports and strategies for your community. And there's a lot of federal money that comes into MPOs. The MPO in Pima County is PAG, Pima Association of Governments. And it's not just the city of Tucson. 
it it didn't start independently as the city of Tucson. Mag and, and Phoenix did start independently as Phoenix, but it did not here. So we're all kind of got in at the same time. How long has it been in existence? Oh, man. I don't know. Just 40 about, years for, or something. How long? 40 years 40. probably. It's been in, for a long time. And what that is is uh, the, the uh, government wants you to form MPOs or COGS. I'm going to use a lot of these mm-hmm. three letter. Or mm-hmm. bring, a cog is council of government or governments. So your MPO is PAG, Pima Association of Governments, which is a council of governments. And what that allows us to do in Pima County is we get about $25 million from the feds. Per year? Per year. And about $25 million from the state. So fifty million. Fifty million dollars. That's for PAG. This is not our right. TA now. And it used to be STP money and twelve six money. Uh, I think those acronyms have changed, but it's the same principle. And what you do is they send that in to help you coordinate planning for growth or development or drainage or airports or of a region uh, of region. the region mm-hmm. in general which is smart which is a really smart thing uh you have to be fifty thousand in your entity to start an mpo the only other community in pima county that's eligible to start an mpo is morana you have to be over 50,000 in the last decade census. And we were 52, three or something in 20. So in Pima County right now, it would be Tucson. And Morana. 500 but Tucson plus is not independently the MPO. Right. It's all of us together. But, the but that's county. the only two that qualify that in this That would qualify community. to independently yeah. be an MPO. Okay. And, uh, you know, we're kind of looking at that kind of stuff. Then your MPO is allowed to do other entities, such as the RTA, Regional Transportation Authority. And it's the same nine members that we have in the uh, MPO. Be Tucson, Rana, Oral Valley, Sarita, South Tucson, Pascualiaki, Tohono O'odham, ADOT. There's nine Voting members on that board. Can I ask you just a hypothetical? Hmm. Vale's getting ready to incorporate. Uh, I certainly vote. hope so. I was listening so today. So does that make this, do you guys invite it them? Will How make, does that oh, work? Absolutely. It, it would be, an, I mean, we'd have to vote them in, but it'd right. be an automatic. What is happening is the county and our new RTA program has a couple projects in the Vale area. Uh, if Vail incorporates on November 7th, and I certainly hope they do, mm-hmm. and the town of Marana and the town of Sarita have been trying to help them in any way we can, uh, they will become a member. It will be a 10-member board then instead of nine. And everyone, <laughs> correct me if I'm wrong, have equal shares. Everybody gets one vote. Uh, when we originally did the RTA – uh, in 2006, the Regional Transportation mm-hmm. Authority. Uh, the city wanted three votes and the county two and everybody else got one. And what I told Mr. Huckleberry at the time is see you around. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Everybody's going to get a vote. And it doesn't matter if you're South Tucson with 5,000 people or the Pasquayaki tribe, which is a smaller unit and stuff as well. We want you to have a say here. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if you divide up the three, uh, all the, oh, and Pima County is yeah. also yeah. an entity of the night. You know, you got about 540,000 people in Tucson, you know, about 350 or 60,000 in Pima County. And the third largest entity would be Morana uh-huh. with 61,000 people. <clears throat> but I, I want my friends, uh, you know, in, in South Tucson, you know, and uh, to, to have a say. 
And uh, so what we did is uh, uh, in 2006, it started before that, everybody working together, we decided that we needed a transportation authority in Pima County because we needed to build major roadways, mm -hmm. interchanges, underpasses. And we still do. And we still do. And a couple things that we got out of this is the uh, Ida Road interchange. Yay. And the Twin Peaks interchange. Yay. And uh, in the next one, we've got two or three interchanges that we need to modify. But... Uh, we're, Tangerine we're, and Marana Road. Tangerine Road will be a new complete interchange, like Ina. Uh, Cortero, which is a pretty big interchange now, one of the heaviest traveled in the entire urban area, we need to modify. And part of what the state wants and the railroad wants is us to stut, shut the interchange down for like two years and build an Ina Road interchange. We can't do that. Yeah. I mean, uh, Cortero Road carries literally, literally hundreds of thousands of cars a day. Yeah. And we can't shut it down. We're going to have That's to modify it. You know, you might shut a lane or two down here yeah. and there for a while, but you can't. And we've come up with innovative ideas. I think I had said before in a previous yeah. podcast, an overcast, overpass over the overpass. Yeah, yeah. And east and west yeah, on, absolutely. Uh, on uh, Cortero. I think that's the only way that gets done. And you could, you would, a lot of it would still go through the old interchange, but if you're going straight through on Cortero, you could go over and, and back on roads, interchange over the interchange. Mm -hmm. Because the real would, problem is going east at that intersection. All the, not that it couldn't use widening and improving. Well, and, but, but in the evening from about three to five, it's going west. Yeah, but at least you can turn that way. The yeah. east you can't if there's a train and stuff. That's a mess. That's a mess. But so, you know what? I have great deal of faith in but, the powers that be. You know, we making we've, that happen. We've got to to do a bunch of stuff. And uh, we've had a lot of great success. I mean, Sarita Road was built. Houghton Road was widened. Mm -hmm. uh, we got the Twin Peaks Interchange and the uh, Ina Road Interchange and different things in different communities. You know, uh, State Route 77 was modified, Oracle Road, uh, Tangerine Road, of which about half is in Oral Valley and half is in Marana. The piece in Oral Valley is completely done. And about two thirds of the Miranda piece is completely yeah, we kicked, done. We kicked there like, yeah, we were, so, we were on that this morning. So, Remember when we used to do this oh, all yeah. the way through there? So what we're starting probably within the next six months is four lane, all weather divided from the freeway up past uh, Breakers Road yeah. on Tangerine. Yeah. And that project will start. That will still leave about a two-mile stretch between that and uh, Twin Peaks Road. Or like I say, Breakers Road or PVV fabricating my well, buddy Peter your, and Larry your, and those your guys. Friends that and we are going to go see them. I talked to them the other day. chose to, yeah. when they needed to expand yeah. their company, they yeah. left Tucson and came to Moran. Yeah, and that beautiful? And built a new building. Yeah, it's beautiful. So we're back to the alphabet soup. We, uh, we've got we, RTA. So we, we have the RTA. Well, the RTA in 2026 is done. It's mm -hmm. a 20-year program. Uh, I'll, I'll tell you a little bit. We were pretty ambitious when we started, and we figured we'd have $2 billion, $100 million a year for 20 years to build these projects. We came up way short. Uh the PAG, and I mentioned those monies that the federal and state pay to PAG, roughly $50 million a year between state and federal. About six or eight years ago, we decided to give all of that money to the RTA because the RTA was coming up way short on tax monies. We had a recession in that time, oh eight, oh nine, people 10. blame a lot of stuff on the COVID virus. Actually, sales tax went up during COVID. Mm -hmm. People were buying stuff, remodeling mm -hmm. their house, mm -hmm. doing whatever. Yeah, Home Depot was. And they they were doing great. So 
that ended up being about $300 million that we gave to the RTA out of this $2 billion. And we still came up about $200 million short on a few projects. One Miranda project, one county project, and a couple city of Tucson projects, which will go in the next RTA if it is successful. But uh, what that says is we estimated $2 billion. We really only collected about $1.5 billion because we gave $300 million from PAG. We're $200 million mm -hmm. short. Mm -hmm. So we've got to be pretty careful in what we're doing. So PAG created RTA, which created CAC, which is the Citizens Advisory Council, about 30 people. And what they're supposed to do is go through projects that have been submitted by the nine entities. Well, the state doesn't submit any, but everybody else does, right. Thrive the Nation, all the cities and towns, the county. And go through the projects and choose what we're going to build if we're successful getting through the voters from 26 to 46. That's where the mess starts. And we're really having a lot of problems. And I'm going to call out the city of Tucson. I love the city of Tucson. My mother was born there. I was born there. My kids were born there. And one of my grandkids is born there. I'm not anti-Tucson. But what they're asking for is just unreasonable. So we go to the CAC committee, Citizens Advisory Committee, that's going to lay out the programs we're going to take to the voters to extend the program another 20 years. They want to spend all the money on transit. Mm -hmm. They have made statements at the meeting, we want to take lanes away from roads because what we want to do is force people out of their cars and into the buses or the choo-choo train, the light rail downtown. Right. I call it the choo-choo yeah. train. I'm not a big fan. And uh, <clears throat> that doesn't work, and, and I'll tell you why. Tucson's 260 square or 240 square miles. Marana's 130. You add the other cities and towns in urban Pima County, you're five, 600 square miles. The train runs yeah. right through the middle of, of town, actually from the Mercado to the university. People can't get to the train to ride it. Right. I mean, if you have to drive your car 10 or 15 miles to get to the Mercado to ride the train to the university, yeah, a couple of miles, you might as well just yeah. go to the yeah, university off there. the freeway, you know, yeah. or ride a bike or yeah. something. So transit in, in the Tucson region is not really the answer. But the CAC committee, which are people that the city of Tucson got put on the committee, uh, are insisting that the money be spent on transit and that roadways that were going to be expanded not be expanded, uh, build bike paths along the roadways or whatever. Well, that's great. Bike paths yeah. are fine yeah. for people that walk or ride a bike or do whatever. But the majority of the traffic in southern Arizona moves by car. Yeah. And we live all over the place. You may live in Pinal County and work in the city of Tucson up off a of missile base or something. You can't ride transit. Yeah. And you're not going to drive into the Mercado and get on transit to ride it to the university. Right. You're just isn't that, not. Isn't that the slogan when you move to the county? Every, you're 20 minutes from everywhere. Right. So what is happening now is the city's putting pressure on the other eight members that if this new RTA next, we call it, doesn't have all this transit in it, we don't know if we want to be involved. Well, I can tell you, speaking for Marana and Sarita and I think Oro Valley, if it's all transit, we don't want to be involved. Yeah. And we're having a hard time getting to the middle. Yeah. And I think it's kind of getting to a point that 
if we don't start moving more toward the middle and not being irrational, right? We're not going to have an RTA next. I think you could make that argument about a lot of things. And what is happening, uh, a friend of mine, Brian Keeley, deputy chief at mm-hmm. Northwest Fire, is mm-hmm. on that CAC board. And he made a statement at their meeting yesterday. And he said, you want 60% of the money spent on transit, talking to a couple of these really city appointments on that board. And they said, yes, we've got to have equity and we've got to have transit for all and we've got to have all this stuff. Well, nobody writes the transit mm-hmm. now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I know. He said, you're going to get 60% of this. Yeah. Zero. Because if you drive the Pasqua Yaqui people or the people in Cerrito or yeah. Oro Valley or Marana or South yeah. Tucson, out you're not going to have an rta next so then you're going to get a hundred percent of nothing right right well what's a hundred percent of nothing it's still zero still nothing and we're making that argument you know uh (laughs) the city needs this project more than anybody else you know the roads in the city are horrible you know, their parks are filling up with transients and homeless people and drug and addicts. I was in Tucson twice this weekend. I don't normally go to Tucson. I don't go south of the river. You know what? It's depressing. I'm well, sorry. It is depressing. But for the Tucson to start digging out, they need this RTA program to help enhance roadways and they need a lot more than public and, transportation and move to traffic happen. around public transportation does not work fix here. anything i've been to portland i've been to seattle i've been to different denver and different places and the transit works pretty well there but those communities are on a much smaller grid exactly i mean tucson itself's 240 square miles portland's about 100 square right. miles with the same amount right, of people right. So transit the density works, is there transit in some of these works places. There Absolutely. It, all the buildings down torn are 20 stories and they have a lot of They talk about right. walking and stuff. People don't Well, you can't here. I'm probably where we live. I'm by 5 miles from the nearest place to like eat or buy groceries. Well, I'm going to walk to the grocery and, store. And the thing is if they continue to make that argument that it's got to be based on transit I think the program's going to shut yeah. down in 2026 when we finish the and first that's unfortunate. RTA. And it's going to be really unfortunate to everybody, but the biggest loser is going to we'll be the be, city of Tucson. We'll the, yeah. But they want to continue to play hardball. And they they don't want to build roadway miles because of need. They want to keep the roadways narrow. Because it said it forces people out of their car to get on it's the a transit. Mess. But you can't get to the it's transit. It's a mess. I, I was down there on campus, by the way, Saturday. All the kids are moving back in, young young, uh, young adults. That's a zoo. And I know that was a special weekend with the moving in. But getting to and from the university, from the freeway, was almost impossible. And de- like I say, very depressing. That's, well, a, that's another issue. Well, you know issue, who rides but- the train? Yeah, I do. On Saturday evening, university students jump on the train. They ride it downtown. There's a couple bars down there, and a couple of them are kind of fun for young yeah. people. Yeah. They spend a little time. They can have a few drinks. They don't have to jump in a right. car. They jump on a train, ride it back home. Great. Love it. That's the only time anybody rides right. the train. Right. Nobody rides the train. I went in with a, a friend a few months ago and we went to the Mercado and caught the train. We just, we were just going to ride the train to ride the train. And you rode by yourself. And the two of us and three other people were on the train. We went all the way to the university and back. Did your loop? I mean, we just did the loop. It's a beautiful train. Oh, it was a comfortable ride. Yeah. There was nobody on it. Nobody. I can't remember how that cost. How much did that? Two hundred million. Yeah, 
two hundred million. So two years worth of money from because yeah, well million they a year. they got I know it was sixty spread million out, from the feds and they they got you know fifty or sixty million from the RTA. But ten percent of the money over a twenty year period went to that project yeah, and that no one's uses. using. And they want to expand it. Yeah, come on. Now they they're talking about running the train to the Tucson Mall. Nobody's going to ride the train to the mall. Let me ask you a question. Speaking of train, and this is a little off topic, but it's not. Would we? Would a train between Phoenix and Tucson work? Yes, but two to four billion I know. dollars. It seems to me like it would work. Yes, that's a different. Yes, that's a different but, animal. But the cost, you know, but the expense. It, it's kind of like yes, it would work. Would you say yeah. two to four billion? Billion. So the entire twenty-year uh, budget. Well, it would have to be almost done on a and it's separate. And that's a. Separate it would have budget, to be a state project yeah, with state, federal, federal money yeah. and all that kind of stuff. But what what I'm saying is the regional two hundred million oh, yeah, yeah, or two hundred yeah, billion yeah. would be consumed by one project. You know that I know it's apples to oranges, but you know where that, I'm coming from. That trade would have passengers. I think it'd be full. Tucson to Phoenix. I think it'd be full. Uh, we have people all the time, by the in way, in the town of Marana that work in Chandler and Tempe and Phoenix yeah. that drive it every day. Yeah, I was one of those guys. We I have used to drive up there every day. Our former town manager, Job Sheed Metta, uh-huh. lives in Phoenix, and he drove to Marana every day for six years. Yeah. Yep. People will drive. Yep. I mean, it's an hour and a half drive, basically. On you know I-10. what, Ed? That's why inner city trains don't work. We're we're car society out here, and until we change that, you're never going to sell the other. Well, and a lot of the people moving buses yet. I do see people on buses, city buses. I I mean, it's not like Chicago or somewhere. Where but you know what? There's there's not. You know, I mean, it, it's kind of like, do all the young airmen from Davis Monthan nah. uh, get on the train and ride it to down? No, because no. there's no train out no. there. And it's, you know, 10 miles to get to the yeah. train to ride it downtown. Yeah. So a lot of these things are not working. And what I'm saying now that if, and I'm, I'm putting this right on the city. Yeah. If you don't come to the table with a reasonable plan, the RTA is going to go away. Yeah. And that's going to be a sad day yeah. in Pima County. For all of us, all one million people that live in this community will be adversely affected by that. But it's kind of getting to the point anymore <laughs> that a lot of people make argument on politics and not on reality. Right, right. Politics, and I'll even break it down to Democrat and Republican. I'm pretty well taking the gloves off. The National Democratic Party is we need transit everywhere. Well, transit in New York City and Philadelphia and Chicago and all that kind of stuff, uh, Boston, Baltimore, where you have millions of people in a small area, transit works great. You know why it works great, Ed? They had that plan in the beginning. Right. They didn't come in and try to retro. Think about it. The places you just mentioned, subways were, and, and tra- public transportation was first. Right. But that which allowed them to build into but that. But what happens is out here it doesn't work. No. Look at uh, the great uh, country of California. Exactly. They were going to build a train from L.A. to San Francisco. At a cost of $25 yeah. billion dollars or something. Right. They built about a fourth of it. Crickets. And, and they're, Crickets. Well, they don't have the money to build it. People, again, they're like we are. And, Ed. Everybody wants know, their car. They want to drive to work. They want to park. And, they and got 14 I, stops on the way home. What I'm saying is in our region, we better... Wake up and start working together. 
And Marana is big enough to form an MPO. That's where I was getting ready to go. Planning organization. We're the only ones, right? The only ones. Yeah. But if the city insists on being unreasonable and wanting hundreds of millions for transit that nobody's going to ride, Marana can form its own MPO. And I actually think that some of the other communities, the Vales, the Cerritos, the Oro Valleys, maybe the Pasquayaki, they may come with us. Now, I'm going to get in the weeds. How does that happen? If, if Marana is eligible because of population and the other ones aren't, eligible become, because they, can you, we incorporate you, i mean not incorporate but what, what can we involve them is the only way to get this federal and state shared revenue is through the mpo metropolitan planning organization if you're not 50,000 you can join with somebody that, that already is, is. oh because that's why all the other ones uh, are there now the city of Casa Grande and my friend you. Craig McFarland's the mayor up there about 10 years ago, formed an MPO in Pinal County. They were, at that time, the only city in Pinal County over 50,000. The MPO had just been the county. Well, Casa Grande formed an MPO because they were big they enough were to big do enough. one okay. on their own. Well, then Coolidge and Eloy Came a part and, of that. and a few of them joined them Yeah, I instead like of being part of the county MPO. Let me ask you a question real quick. Can Could... Just for the sake of argument, could we, uh, Marana, co-op with, is this bound by county boundaries, I guess is what I'm saying. Uh, no. So we could no. say to Casa Grande or, or well, Pima, no, Pinal County, I, hey, we, we'll, we'll be, can you want to be a part of our group? To join with Casa Grande because they're 40 miles from North right. Marana. Right. Doesn't really work. Okay. Because it's a, it's a. I get you. Kind of a an but industrial, Oral Valley works, commercial, Chayarita works, more Bayo dense works. area. That's why the 50,000 thing is set up. I like this. I like where but you're going. But if ahead. we were to leave and form our own MPO, Sarita and Oral Valley and Vail could join us. I like this. I like where you're going. And basically, you leave the city on its own. How would that affect the uh, revenues? I mean, the monies. Well, would, the monies would, be, would be the same. So it'd still be 200 Using old school numbers? No, 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 no. But the money would be the same. How much money comes into Pima County? Okay. Right now, all goes to PAG, the federal and state money. Okay. If Marana forms an MPO, we would get a percentage. Say Marana, Sarita, Oral Valley, Vail, you know, 200,000 of the million people here, we'd get so we 20%. Get 20%, okay. So we would get, you know, 20 5 million, million yeah, from yeah. Fed and state. I like it. But you've got less people to spread it under, and we're lesser populations. And that's not ideal because we've – Tucson is our neighbor. Well, what? Ideally, we need them to cooperate. And us with them. What and them will with happen us? if Tucson stays on the track they're on now? They're going to become Detroit Southwest. Yeah. They're it's closer, older right? roads, older parks, older housing, lower income per capita. And the suburbial areas, like I said, Oro Valley, Marana, Sarita, Vale, will grow like crazy, yeah. which we're doing now. And the city will be in sad shape. Yeah. I mean, really sad shape. I, I mentioned they have right. half the police officers they right. need. They've got drug addicts hanging out in the parks. It's depressing. They just can't figure out how to do it. Yeah, it's depressing. And if you want to run on the progressive left direction, you are not New York City or Boston. You're Tucson. Mm-hmm. And we've got to fix this, Clint, or we're going to be in trouble. I don't want Tucson to fail. No, absolutely not. I love Tucson. Oh, no, absolutely not. And the people. Yeah. But the government right now in Tucson is failing the people. And you know what, Ed? You guys just can't give up on that. 
I know that's a, I mean, when I say you guys, I mean, you guys, you can't give up on that despite some of the opposition and the, I mean, you know what I'm saying without well, you're say, arguing, calling names. You're arguing about a city. Uh, Grand Canyon University now has more students than the University of Arizona. I know it. It is huge. Beautiful campus. I know some kids you know, going there. Huge, young huge people. campus. They wanted to come into Tucson. I know it. Over on the southwest yeah. side. And Regina Romero and her group just told them to go away. Yeah. Well, now they've got like 90,000 students. Now, a lot of them are online, but right. a lot of them are, right. are on, in campus as well. I had no idea they'd built that new campus up there. I thought they were still in the center part of town. And somebody goes, no, Clint, or where are they on? Uh, well, no, their campus is not in the best part of Phoenix. No, no. But, I mean, it used to be in a worse part of Phoenix. But they bought a bunch of land around them. What, they 35th have a Avenue. huge and- campus. Was that Glendale? Roughly? No, it's still in Phoenix. But I mean, is it? They so, they may have a Glendale campus I, I, too. Where's the big one at, though? Is it on? It's in South Phoenix. Yeah, but I mean, the thing is, they were told to go away. Yeah. Tom Volge years ago, when IBM was coming into the tech park, had four or five hundred employees, and they were going to be the next. They were going to be another Raytheon. We would have had IBM and Raytheon here. And Volgi went in and said, we're, we're going to tax your wholesale product. And IBM said, I don't yeah, think we'll so. we'll go somewhere else. And they yeah. left. Yeah. And I'm telling you, we better, I, I don't care if people have ideology, but you got to figure out a way to pay for it and a way to operate it. Yeah. You got to bought the money. <laughs> right now, I mean, I, I don't want to just keep ragging on the city, but I, RTA next is really important. You know, you got three interchanges in Marana. I think there's one in Sarita. There's a bunch of work being done in Oro Valley, some out in Vail, you know, a uh, little bit of work at the drive in the nation and stuff. But most of the work is city. Yeah. Most of the work is city. And you have these individuals on the citizens advisory committee, CAC, that are city oriented that want to do away with capital road expansion projects yeah. and build transit only not going to work and and who is it that the city or the county are now encouraging their employees to work from home because it's too dangerous where they work well i uh, some of I mean, it that's is, some part of it's parcel, the but- city it's like, come on. And I, and I love the city of Tucson. I mean, I, I just do. I, you know. Well, really, what's not to like? The history is there. We got right. a cool history. Well, and, but, but they There's so changed, much fun stuff down they there. They have it's changed just, so much. It's not safe to go to no. downtown Tucson. You at can't night. get there. It's the not, roads are horrible. It's not safe to go to a lot of the neighborhoods at night. Crime is horrible. You know, and what is happening is the wealth is moving out of the city. Absolutely, it is. If you go to Marana or Valley and Sarita, the average income is ninety four, ninety five thousand yep. yep. a year. Yep. That might be one professional or both right. mom and dad working. Right. In the city, it's about forty five. Yeah, about half. About half. So the wealth is moving to the suburbs. They may come into the city to work. Right. They go back out to the suburbs. Yeah. That's where they buy their groceries. Yeah. That's where they buy their car. That's where they buy their clothing. That's, that's where, where the kids are educated. That's where, their that's kids where the go schools to school. get the most We're money. getting ready. Uh, Miranda's getting ready to build another K through eight in uh, Gladden two, starting within the next few months. Uh, you know, and uh, if if all the wealth moves out of the city, if somebody comes into the city and works, and then they take that money, and they go to Miranda, Oro Valley, Sarita, Vale, wherever. And spend the money there. Clothing, right. cars, food, right. recreation. So you're just taking wealth out of your community and spending it somewhere else. Yeah. And they haven't gotten that in a long time, have they? And, I mean, no, it's been this way for Like I said, I, I am not anti-Tucson. I love the community. 
you know, my my grandparents lived in in Tucson. My mother went to Tucson High. You know, I as I'm you not, said, you were born there. I was born in St. Mary's. My kid, children were born in TMC, and one of my grandchildren was born in St. Yeah. Joe's. Uh, I'm not anti Tucson, no. but if the Tucson government doesn't get their act together, they're going to go under. You know, you mentioned the prof- people that work in town. My sister, you when you were saying that, my sister lived used to live on Hampton, which is what's that called? Uh, Sam Hughes. Sam Hughes neighborhood, and it was an older neighborhood. It's it was a beautiful in, neighborhood. It was actually. in there where. Uh, What's his name used to live? You know who I'm talking about, the Don, the Mafia Don. What was his name? Bonanno. Oh, yeah. She so lived right around the corner from Bonanno. And Those are 100-year-old homes. She remodeled it. It's, it is a beautiful neighborhood, but you know what? Don't walk around the streets there. At and night. you know what she did? And she worked at that time at UMC. Now she works at the U of A. She's in the uh, nursing uh, staff. And she moved. She she took her money from there and moved up to Oral Valley. So the person you just talked about actually left the city downtown near where she worked to go live in Oral Valley where it's safer and spend her money, and she commutes into the Well, and if you, if you start looking at it, even a lot of the jobs, uh, Roush, which used to be Ventana Medical yep, right in up Oral there. Valley. Right up there. Hundreds of employees, thousands maybe. Uh, you've got Sergeant Controls and F.L. Smith Krebs right. in Marana, both with over 500 employees. And, and uh, actually, Sergeant is looking for another place in Marana because yep. they want to expand to 1,000. Yep. Yep. We've got part of the Roush. We've got two buildings in North Marana. We've got companies coming to Marana, coming to Oro Valley, coming to Sarita, is we're getting to the point there are a lot of jobs in the suburbial cities as well. And they're not going to have to come into the city even to work. We live from where we're at right now. We're five minutes from the town of Tucson. Is that fair to say? Right. Right now. Downtown and I'm, Tucson. and I'm here every day. This weekend was the first time I've actually been in the Tucson proper, probably in six or eight months. Right. Well, I don't ever, I don't ever. Am I, and am and I, I only went there because I had to. You know, my, my church is here. Uh, the children I know, family, all go to Marana schools. Uh, you know, we uh, the town of Marana has beautiful parks. We're in the process of building a new sixty-four it's million new, dollar. It's fresh community recreation aquatic center in downtown Marana. They're going to break yeah. ground within the next couple of months. It's going to take about two years okay. to build it. Early, early 2025, it's going to be open. We have recreation. We have schools. We have churches. We have jobs. We have parks. You're not going to have to leave our no, community to do unless you go visit yeah. family out yeah. of state or something. Somewhere. Hey, we're coming up on the end of this episode, Ed, and I, w- I want to echo what you said. We're rooting for Tucson. We want Tucson to be oh, absolutely. incredibly successful. I'm going right. to come, because you've said that, no bias, no anti-Tucson, but get your act together down there. We're here to help, but this, what you're doing right now is just off the rails. We're not, well, we're not accomplishing anything, and you're not benefiting anybody. If they continue anybody. to insist on all the money being spent on transit, yeah, it's, and not expanding roadways or freeway interchanges, or any of this kind of stuff, RTA next will fail. Okay, we're going to leave it right there. We're going to pick it up the next time. All the don't mean all, to be negative, <laughs> Clint. Usually, I'm no, very absolutely on these no. Podcasts, you know what? It's it's just facts. But sometimes you just have to talk. And about facts sometimes reality. are dirty. That's just the reality. Sausage is not a making sausage isn't pretty, but we all enjoy it. Right. I thank know you, you very much for having uh, me it's on. My and thank pleasure, you for the Zoe. opportunity. Hey, Local Marana, localmarana.com, all the groups, all the Facebook pages, all over digital. We're also sponsored by Copper Creek Cookies, uh, Sell to Allen, our good friend, uh, Top, Vision Church. I know I'm leaving a few out, but we appreciate you guys. 
Uh, quality lube and tube. Thank you. Thank you. David was in my ear. Thank you, David. As always, an <laughs> awesome job. He just sits in there and just keeps us going. Look forward to uh, moving on with the podcast and maybe some new adventures as well. Hey, Ed's going to have an announcement here real soon about some stuff. And that's uh, pretty exciting to me because what it does is it gets information out to the citizens of not only Miranda, but the entire region. Exactly. I'm going to, I'm going to leak and that, it. That new format, I think. I'm going to leak it just a little bit right now. Look out for Ed. The Ed Honey show is coming soon. <laughs> Thank you, Ed. Appreciate it. Thanks. Appreciate you. <laughs>